The statue of Athena Parthenos is destroyed long before Lord Elgin shows up. We know about it from Greek and Latin descriptions of the piece. The sculpture was fashioned of gold and ivory on a wooden structure and designed by Phidias. It would have been about 40 feet tall. The piece would have been very similar to what we see in other sculptures today. You say, but we don't usually skin sculptures. We usually build them out of marble or clay or bronze. But we do. The Statue of Liberty is built the same way. There's an internal armature and then there's the copper skin on the Statue of Liberty. Here they used ivory and gold for that skin. Ivory for the skin, gold for everything else. Of course, it's an offering to the god. It makes a lot of sense. But this means that it would have had to have a cella that was much wider than what we would typically see in a Greek temple, which is why the Parthenon is a little bit wider than what we've typically seen. Now, Athena herself is fully armed, holding a shield, a spear, a helmet, and a figure of Athena Nike in her hand. This is a female personification of victory. When we see winged figures in the ancient and classical world, it's usually going to, especially the classical world, it's going to be a symbol of victory, either called winged victory or in this case, Nike, meaning victory, Athena of victory, and refers to the victory over the Persian invasion. On the soles of her sandals, we would see a centauromachy, so centaurs versus Greeks, showing the Greeks as civilized, defeating barbarians, defeating the powers of the wilderness. On the outside of her shield is the Greeks versus online retail. Yes, it's an Amazonomachy. The Greeks here fighting the Amazons, representing sort of the social order that men stand over women in Greek society. On the inside of the shield would have been a giant tomachy, the Greek gods, the Olympian gods versus the Titans of Tennessee. And this would represent the power of Greek religion and culture over everyone else. Each battle is a metaphor for a triumph over the other. And really, if you look at all of the sculpture in the Parthenon and on the Parthenon, the overarching theme is us versus them. We are better than everyone else. The Greeks even give us the term barbarian because it sounds, the word sounds like they thought everyone else sounded. To them, everyone sounded like bar, 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 bar. You know, they couldn't make out the language. And so they considered everyone else to be barbaric. And by the way, we do the same thing today to peoples of all places in the world. There probably was a reflecting pool of some form in front of her, both to control the humidity, because of course we have a wooden armature, we have ivory, so we want to control that to keep it functioning, keep it whole. But also that pool would have made the sculpture look that much more remarkable. It's a reflecting pool, much like we see in Washington DC or elsewhere. 